I was trying to make it too difficult because what I was trying to do was write the live training and then write a unique social media post and another unique social media post. And another, and I was just like, I'm going to go mad. I'm going to pull my hair out. <laughs> you are not going to want to miss this because in this episode, Tracy Beavers talks about how she built a multi six figure income through her Facebook group. Now, if you've been listening to my podcast, you know that I've I'm not always a fan of Facebook. Um, and this gives a different perspective for me. So um, she talks about how she set up a group, who she invited, when she invited them, how she invited them, and what her strategy was for content. She drops all of those details there. You're going to want to see it. Don't miss it. So uh, click uh, subscribe if you're not already subscribed so that you get the episode when it, de- when it drops uh, on your podcast player. Uh, and I'll have links in the description. Have a great day. Enjoy the episode. Welcome back to the Community Strategy Podcast. My name is Deb and I'm excited today. We have a special guest, Tracy Beavers. She has a proven track record in marketing, sales, and business growth. With her award-winning career spanning 20 years and a multi-six-figure business, Tracy has helped hundreds of entrepreneurs with everything from overcoming fear of sales to growing their business's visibility through organic marketing strategy. She's the creator of Business uh, Visibility Made Easy. Welcome, Tracy, to the Community Strategy Podcast. Thanks. I'm excited to be here. I'm super glad that you are here. And I wanted to just shout out Podmatch right at the top of this interview because we both met through Podmatch and I know Alex really well. So thanks to Alex for connecting us through Podmatch. Yeah. Um Tell me a little bit about uh, what we didn't cover there in that little brief bio. If if there's something that we want to pull out of there for community builders today. Well, I love community. I'm all about community. Um, You mentioned my my sales career. And what made me successful in sales is building genuine connections and relationships, which is what makes you successful when you're building a community online or a community of any kind, really, even if it's local in person, you know, events that you're that you're wanting to get started. It's all about creating genuine human to human relationships and seeing how we can be of service to other people. So I love that we're talking about community today. It's one of my favorite things. I being an entrepreneur is freaking lonely. (laughs) And so I am all about community. Very true. Very true. And yeah, it's relationship building. It really is. And so, you know, it's, we can't hack it. We can't systematize it in certain ways we can, in certain ways we can't, but it's really about authentic people connections and people are unpredictable humans. And so there's not like a a one size fits all for this whole thing called community. Right. But I wanted to know, how did you get into uh, doing community? What was, what did that look like for you? Why did you decide it was something you wanted to even do? So I came from the corporate world, as you mentioned, I had an over 20 year career in corporate um, business development, marketing sales, and I got really fed up with corporate and decided to hatch a plan to leave and quit the nine to five altogether. Um, And so when I started building in the online space, one thing I noticed was, as I just mentioned, it's lonely. I mean, I went from working in an office building with other people to working here at the house and my husband was at work. And at the time the kids were still at home, middle school and high school. Now they're there, we're empty nesters, but they were at school and it was just me and the dog. And I was like, okay, uh, I need people to talk to because I'm I'm an extrovert. I get energy from talking to other people. And so I started looking at, I was like, oh, Facebook groups. Hmm, what is this all about? And I joined a few groups looking for community. And honestly, some of them were great. Some of them, not so much, as I'm sure you know. Um, there was no real connection in some of them. And so me being the stubborn gal that I am, I thought, well, if I'm not seeing exactly what I want on Facebook, as as far as a group is concerned and the community that I really want, I'll just build it myself. And so one of the first things I did for my online business, which has turned into the biggest source of my list growth and my income and my sales conversions was building my own community, my own free Facebook group. 
Um, and, and that's the whole reason why I started it was because I was like, I got to be around other people that are doing what I'm doing and see how I can be of service to them and see how they can be of service to me too. That's one of the things I love about the group that I formed is when I meet another online entrepreneur, even if they are a business and sales coach and do something similar to me, if they're a really cool, kind, warm human being, I'm going to invite them into my group because I don't know all the answers. And you know, then, I, then we end up with members that are podcast experts or copywriters or website developers. And then everybody's able to, to truly help each other. But yeah, that's the whole reason why I started it. I was lonely and um, needed to find some friends. <laughs> yeah, I get that. I quit my corporate job in 2019. I'm curious, did you have uh, a business plan where you are running a business at that point? Or was this a new adventure for you at that moment? So when I decided to leave corporate, I started building businesses. In fact, the, the, um, my business and sales coaching practice wasn't the first thing that I tried. I, I joined a couple of network marketing companies, just dipping my toe back in the entrepreneurial water because I'd been an entrepreneur off and on my whole life. And I kind of shelved it um, years ago. And I thought, I'll just see you know, if I even like this anymore. And um, what I found was the, my most favorite part was helping other people build their businesses. And through some, um, a women's mastermind I was in, uh, the ladies that in that group knew me really well. And they said, you know what? You don't need to be representing these other companies. You need to build your own business. And so it was a year or so after deciding I was going to leave. And then I worked a year or so with the net, with the network marketing companies. Then I decided to build this business. And it was another year maybe before I was able to fully exit corporate because I don't know about you, but I was making well over six figures in my job. And I couldn't just, my husband would have lost his, <laughs> lost his mind if I'd said, Hey, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to quit this job and uh, build a business in the online space. So um, anyway, but, but fast forward several. So I started building businesses like seven years ago. Um, and I think I'm going on year five with this online business. I'd have to go back and actually look the pandemic made everything so blurry for me. You know, people say, well, when did you start? And I'm like, um, let me think. <laughs> it was before the pandemic. Well, and things changed a lot during, you know, you might have had a business idea or something that you were planning to go to market with. And then everything just changed. No matter what you're doing, everybody I've talked to is, yeah, whatever their idea they thought they were going to do in 2020 was not the idea that they, they ended up with in December of 2020. Like, it's right. completely different. And right. I love that you are already talking about community at the at the inception here we're talking about you were in a mastermind and yeah. people identified your strengths which is what's really great about small cohorts like this structured cohorts that provide entrepreneurs with these spaces to allow you to put an idea out there and mm -hmm. get feedback and understand what do i have to think through for this idea that to make it a reality and they can also see the strengths that you have. And it, sometimes you can't see it yourself, but they could see it for you. So I really, really liked that you pointed out just very at the beginning, you, it, it already was inception with community um, at, for, your, for your journey. So I love it. Cool, thanks. I, and, and piggybacking off of what you said, Deb, you're absolutely right. We can't see our own stuff. Like, you know, um, some of my clients and students, they'll ask me a question on one of our live Q&A calls. And, They'll, they'll say, well, I don't think I can do X, Y, Z because of da, 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 da. And I'm like, that's a story you're telling yourself, but they don't hear themselves and they can't see it for themselves. And the same goes for me. And so you're absolutely right. I, I you know, sometimes you, you, we're just so in it that we can't see if our business idea is going to be the best or how we could make it better or what our strengths are, you know? Yeah, I, yeah I, I totally agree with you on that. Yeah. So you um, decided because you didn't find necessarily the right Facebook groups that you felt were really going to help you um, continue on this journey that you wanted to create one. And I know for listeners that are like Facebook, um, I don't t typically I don't recommend Facebook anymore because there's all these other platforms that we can have fun with and things like that. And right. I also talk about how you don't even need platforms because it's just talking to people. So you just need an email address or a phone number or whatever it is to yeah. get started connecting with people. Right. right. But 
why did you decide to to do it on Facebook instead of like an in-person? Like, tell me a little bit about um, that choice. Yeah, so for me, um, I did start my on my coaching practice in person, um, kind of. What I mean by that is I had a massive network coming out of sales and marketing and business development. And I was very well known here for my ability to grow businesses. And so my first one-to-one clients came from that network. But what I knew was I wanted to be in the online space. Um, And I still do some local work. I'm still on the consultant uh, team for the University of Arkansas Small Business um, Center. Um, But my focus, I knew, I saw people creating online courses and launching them out into the world and ending up with clients and students that were all over the globe. And that excited me. And that's what I wanted. And I chose Facebook primarily because I knew Facebook and tech is not my love language. And I am all about building a business with ease and also authenticity. And so um, when I was building this alongside my full-time job, my time was super limited. And so I only had time to focus on one platform and it was Facebook with regard to the social media content, the group, um, networking in other people's groups, all of that I could find there in that one spot. And so that's why I started there because it was just easy. It was the low hanging fruit for me. Um, and at the time I didn't really know about other community platforms like Circle and Mighty Networks and Heartbeat and Kajabi and all that other stuff. I didn't know about any of those things until I started getting into community with other people and seeing what they were building. Um, So you're absolutely right there. There's a million different ways to build relationships and connect with people. Um, But yeah, I just chose Facebook because it was easy and I understood it. And I'd been in other groups and I, I knew about the guide section and I knew how to do the about and the rules. And, you know, it was just easier for me. Got it. So what do you feel like was the, um, how long did it take you is what I should ask you. <laughs> how long did this take you? Cause this is what a lot of people ask me, like, mm-hmm. how long is this going to take me to get what I want? And if the goal, it was the goal clients for you at the end of the road, what was the goal for you with that community and, mm-hmm. and how long did it take you to get there? That's a really good question. So the goal for me was making connections getting visibility because I'm a visibility and email list growth strategist. So first the goal was visibility, getting my name known and building relationships with other people. Um, and tell, about, me how you, tell me how you did that too. <laughs> so I set up the group that was super easy to do. Probably did that in about 30 minutes, maybe max an hour. And then um, for me, it was a matter of emailing my list to invite them, the small list that I had. Um, When I was networking with other people, making sure they knew about it, posting about it on social media. And this is organic growth. Organic growth is slow. It is. Um, However, there does come a point, a tipping point is what I call it, where all of your efforts start to pay off and things just start to pop and explode. And so at the beginning, uh, gosh, this was so many years ago, I don't remember how many members... I was getting each month. Now I have over a hundred people on average join my group every single month. And a byproduct of that has been the way I have my group set up. When they come into the group, they have to answer them. We don't have to, but I ask them to answer the membership entry questions. And by the way that I have them styled, this is a strategy that I teach. My Facebook group is my biggest source of email list growth. And it is my biggest source of sales conversions because I'm in that group giving. And I'm demonstrating my knowledge and my expertise without having to sell anybody anything. I'm just being of service, which is my favorite way to sell, is building the connection, building the relationship, helping other people, letting them know what I've got. And, you know, and and the money takes care of itself in the end. But yeah, um, it was slow in the beginning. Uh, It was just me and my husband. I made him an admin and he was like, why am I in this group? And I'm like, don't ask any questions. I just need you to be an admin in case the whole thing gets shut down. And then I think my mom was in the group for a little bit, my sister, and, you know, you kind of throw everybody in there in the beginning. Um, but, but over time, it's become known on Facebook as one of the best groups to be in because it is a community of really nice people that are all just wanting to succeed in business. And we all just want to help each other. And it, it's made me so happy because it's turned into what I, what I was looking for. It turned into what I wanted. 
Mm -hmm. And you had this referral area when you're asking other people to come in and you're um, bringing in specific intentional people that, um, that help maybe fill in the gaps of uh, things that you might not be an expert at or other things. And then that provides them with this ecosystem. And I really loved what you said in the beginning about um, having questions, but not knowing all the answers, because I think a lot of these, I don't want to say, I don't know, guru-y kind of people <laughs> are like, you know, do my system and, you know, all of this stuff. And I got suckered into that in 2020. That's kind of how I failed my first launch. And so I really like that you were mentioning that it's not about somebody's, you know, system. You don't have all the answers. Tracy doesn't have all the answers. She can help guide you to some things. But I think it's really important to highlight this idea of an ecosystem mm -hmm. and the ability that we all have these strengths and wisdom to share. And giving is typically what we like to do. There's a balance, though. How did you figure out your balance between your time management and what you were what you're going to give versus what you were going to say? Oh, that's actually something I do, you know, as a client service. How did yeah. you figure that out? That's a great question. That's always tricky for people, like like whether you're creating a free Facebook group and you're wanting to know what to put in it, or you're creating a free lead magnet and you're wanting to know what to put in it without giving away the farm, or you're creating a live masterclass. It is a, a balance. It's a tightrope act, you know? Um, but so when I started the group, again, with limited time on my hands because I was working a full-time job, I knew that I could commit consistently to giving them three things each week. Monday was always a win. Give me a win. Thursday was going to be a live weekly training from me where they were going to learn something. And then like Friday would be an inspirational thing to kind of send them off for the weekend. Um, so that's how I started. Just very basic, very small. But that live training I knew would be a value. But then I was thinking about what you just said. Okay, I don't want to cannibalize my offers by giving too much in this live training or giving too much um, help when somebody says I'm stuck on X, Y, Z. So sometimes I will give them the meat and potatoes of what they need, give them the how. Other times I will give them the what and the why, and then let them ask me about the how. Um, and then sometimes I'll direct them to my program at that point. If it's like we're in launch right now for my program and there are people asking about email list growth and visibility. And a great invitation from me is come join my free live masterclass. I'm going to teach you some strategies. You're going to learn some things. Um, and that's going to help them, you know, down the road. But that is um, the million dollar question is how much do you do? And it, a good rule of thumb for me has always been give people the what and the why and a little bit of the how. Just enough to help them out and get them going and, show, and showcase your expertise. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a great strategy. Again, it comes down to like what your, yeah, just what makes sense for for your business. And sometimes um, I struggle with this a lot too. Of like, I love creating content, and I create a lot of it. And so, I've been working on trying to see how I can repurpose instead of constantly creating. I think that's another question that a lot of people listening, you know, are probably thinking is, um, well, how much content are you creating? What are you doing? And how yeah. long is this taking you? Mm -hmm. um, you know, you had said about in the beginning, it was slow yeah. and, and now it's booming. How like that was a how long that was like a year's year, two years. Like how, what did that process? Um, like? Let me think. Probably by probably by the end of the first six to eight months, it started to pick up speed because it is a focal point for me. So when I'm networking with people and I find out what they do and that they, they are a nice, they're like you and I, they're somebody that I could have coffee with. Yeah. I'm going to invite them to my group. It is an easy yes for people. It's a no brainer because they, they are looking for places to get help, to promote themselves anytime, to network with other people in this space. And that's what my group offers. I don't limit promotion. Thankfully, it's not turned into a spam fest. Um, everybody's been, but it's because of the people that I attract. They um, are very judicious about promoting. So it's an easy yes for somebody when I'm networking. The other thing I do is I make sure that it is showcased everywhere I can. So we post about it on social media in all formats, um, reels, stories, carousels, sta static posts, you name it. So we make sure we promote it. And then um, 
in my lead magnets, there is always an invitation to the free Facebook group. When you opt in for one of my lead magnets on the thank you success page, there's an invitation to my free Facebook group. And so by putting together, putting together what I call a marketing machine where I've plugged all the holes and with possibility of how I can market this group um, down to on my Facebook personal profile, when I'm not in launch, you'll see my cover photo showcases, come join my free Facebook group. My business page does too. Um, Instagram, it's on my, in my link in bio, it's in my um, resources page. When I'm interviewed on a podcast, I talk about it. And if I can, I give the name and tell people to join me. When I do a live training, I talk about it and I give them the call to action to join us. So at every turn, my focus, what we focus on grows. And I decided I wanted this Facebook group to be a massive focal point for me. And so that's what caused the tipping point. And then what happens is word of mouth gets out mm -hmm. and people start saying, you need to be in Tracy's group. I have had so many people that have joined my group and, and I always ask them, I DM them a welcome message and I thank them for joining. And I'm always like, Deb, where did you find me? Did it, was it through a mutual friend or whatever? Oh yeah, so-and-so is in my accountability pod. And they said, this was the best group to be in. Or I saw something you posted in another Facebook group. And then when I clicked on your personal profile, I saw your cover photo showcasing your group and your group is something I've been looking for. Or, you know, so it's word of mouth and it's me promoting it. And then it, you know, it just starts to snowball with these visibility strategies that I teach, it just starts to snowball and it's so much fun. What's the content strategy that you have behind this? You said about posting in a lot of places. Um, a lot of people are wondering, is there a way I can be visible without being on social media as much? So I was curious if you had any tips for people that are asking that Absolutely. question. Absolutely. Because if you follow me, you're going to think, oh my gosh, she's on Facebook 24 seven, 365. I am not, but I'm very um, organized and very um, focused with my time. So um, you had asked me though about creating content for the group. Do you want me to go back to that question? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, so, cause I think I skipped right over it and went into something else, Deb, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so when I first started, as I mentioned, I really could only handle three days a week of content. And as it grew and as my business grew, um, I was able to do more because I was able to leave corporate. And then I reached a point where I needed to hire help. And so what you see now in my group is not where I started. What you see now in my group is only because I have an assistant who's awesome. That, that is my right-hand person that takes my crazy ideas and makes, helps me make the content for the group. Um, so hire somebody as soon as you can to help you. I also focused on only one platform at a time. Focus on Facebook, master it, get it converting, get it working for you, and then think about other platforms. And so only because I have an assistant will you see me active on Instagram or active on LinkedIn. That's the only reason why. So if you're just if, if your listeners are just starting out and they don't have the time and energy and bandwidth to do more than one platform, don't do it. Pick one platform, go all in on it. Um, one content strategy that I have that has served me very, very well, and I developed this back in corporate, there's two phases to it. The first phase is where I teach you how to create 90 days of social media content topics in only 30 minutes. And essentially what I have you do is I have you visualize your ideal client and then brain dump a list of topics that you know you could talk about like the back of your hand, ad nauseum, just turn the mic on and go. And I want you to brain dump those and try to get to 12 because 12, if we take one topic per week, is 90 days of content topics. So then I looked at that one content topic that week and I said, that's going to be my live weekly training because that's my piece of regular weekly content. As you know, it's really beneficial to have one regular piece of weekly content a blog, a podcast, a live training, not your email newsletter, because that's only going to people that are on your list. But to get more people on your list, you need a regular piece of weekly content. For me, live video was easy. Again, I was looking for easy ways to build this. A podcast, I still want to do, but that requires tech and equipment. And I was like, I don't have time for that. And so I would just push the live button and go live. So I would look at that topic for that week. That was my live training for the week. Then that is what I, this is the second phase of it. 
that live training, your regular piece of weekly content, whether it's a live training, a blog, a podcast, that is your anchor piece of content from which everything else is born, including your email. Mm-hmm. And so, um, and now with chat GPT, didn't have chat, chat, chat GPT back then. I feel like I grew up riding a dinosaur trying to build this online business with all the new stuff we have going on. But um, now I could take that live training, throw it into chat GPT and say, hey, could you write me two to three social media posts that pertain to this topic? Could you find me a famous quote from somebody that's well known that pertains to this topic? So then you have two to three social media posts about that topic. Here's your anchor piece. Then you have a quote graphic about that topic, right? And then I can take that live training. I can write my blog from it. I could, I'm planning to take the live training, take the audio of it and put it over on for a podcast. And Mm -hmm. so from that one piece, that one content choice, that one week, And that one piece of anchor piece of content, everything else comes off of it. And then my email every week, if you pay really close attention on Tuesday, it says, hey, this is what I'm going to talk about live on Thursday. Click here to join me. And then Friday is, hey, did you miss my live training yesterday? I got you. Here's the replay. Yeah. I mean, let's not make this difficult. So if you write a blog, email your list about it and go, hey, I wrote this just for you. I'm so excited for you to read it. Because the cool thing is when they hit that blog, it's going to hit your website. And that's good for SEO juice or you, your podcast is housed on your website too. send them your podcast episode and then they'll hit your website. You know, so I think we just I was trying to make it too difficult because of what I was trying to do was write the live training and then write a unique social media post and another unique social media post. And, another, and I was just like, I'm going to go mad. I'm going to pull my hair out. And then I couldn't remember what the heck I'd talked about. You know, it's like, oh my gosh, did I already post about this? All I have to do is go back and look at my content topic for that week and go, oh yeah, I probably said that. So I can either go back and grab it and redo it and re- throw it back out there. That's the coolest thing about that list. Once you get that 90 day list and you get to the end of that 12 weeks, that end of that 90 days, go back to week one and take all that stuff, zhuzh it up a little bit, Throw back out there because I don't remember what you posted 90 days ago and nobody else does either. Yeah. You know, <laughs> that's so true. And I, even if you're like, if 90 days sounds like a lot, cause it does sound like a lot to me, I would yeah. say you could even do it over a year of time. You could do, you know, 12 things. One, do one, once a month, exactly. do something, um, you know, do once a quarter, if that's too much, like finding yeah. ways to like make it doable is the most important thing, because if you make it unattainable for yourself, it's not going to get done if it's stre- yeah. or you're going to stress yourself out to the point of exhaustion because you're trying to do it, which is, you know, kind of what I did in 2020 was trying to do the, all the things. And right. I think you're, you're, you know, also saying that it's a podcast or a blog, it's a blog or, you know, this, it's not, and, and I think a lot of people are like, Oh, I have to have this. And I have to have that. And I have to No, it's just one. And people can't even consume all of that content, which is another whole thing of like, do you even think that your content is being consumed because, um, creating so much. And some people like videos, other people don't like videos. Some people like to read other people don't like to read. So it's like, testing out those things and who your audience is and what they resonate with. So I think that is a great point to say that repurposing content is probably the biggest value that you can ever do as a business owner, because it will save you so much time. Mm -hmm. And also, if you don't know chat GPT, there are very easy ways to learn about it. But if even that sounds too much, I'm sure you could just do a brain dump and, and simply write out a few different ideas and you'll, you'll get it from there. Like, yeah, happen. For Grammarly sure. is my friend. I like Grammarly. So I love it. I'm very much a, a Grammarly person. So yeah, I agree with you because if they start, so if 90 days sounds like too much, I love what you said, trim it back. Can you do two things a month? Do you need to do one thing per month? Whatever they start with, I want them to start with something that allows them to be consistent. That's why when I started my Facebook group, I was like, okay, I know I can pound out three things every week consistently for this group. I didn't want to overload myself because if I had tried to post seven days a week in that group, the whole thing would have fallen off the rails. And so just like what you're saying, commit to what you can do and make it easy on yourself. And when you have time, 
you can add more bells and whistles later, more content later. But I think what they're going to find is once they get in the rhythm of doing this, it's going to seem, it's going to get so much easier. And they're going to see all the different ways to repurpose, like the podcast. Oh my gosh, you'd probably have a million ways to repurpose your podcast. I probably do. And I <laughs> have thought about redoing episodes or replaying episodes and I haven't done that yet. I thought about mixing it up and like having a topic based podcast. So like going back to all the podcast episodes and pulling like the specific topics of people talking about like content planning or something and having a whole episode dedicated to that. Yep. But it's all in time, you know, time. And then it's, you know, how much energy do I want to exert on these things? And so I'm happy with I have decided I want to run my business in a certain way. And right. that's how I've decided I'm going to move forward. So um, I can't believe it's already time to go, but it's, uh, mm -hmm. it is, um, I wanted to have you share, you can, um, if you could say the name of your community for everyone so that if they are looking on Facebook, they can find it and then the best way to contact you. Yes. My Facebook group is be a confident entrepreneur, get visible, grow your email list and your income. And everybody's welcome. We have over 2,500 online entrepreneurs now. Um, it's, I'm told it's one of the most fun and supportive groups that you'll find on the platform. The best way to connect with me is actually in that group. Um, go to Facebook, find me, Tracy Lane Beavers, and you'll see on my cover photo, unless I'm in launch for my program, my cover photo will showcase my free Facebook group, but also the links to it and the links to contact me and everything else are right there in my personal profile. Great. Well, it was so lovely to talk with you. I'm yeah. super excited to jump into your community. And I love that you said that it's fun because if a community is not fun, people, let's rethink it because it needs to be fun because we yeah. have enough stuff that's not fun in our life to do. We need fun stuff. So right. yeah, making, yeah, making it fun is definitely going to get my, my uh, interest happening. <laughs> For sure. Make it like a big picnic or a cocktail party or, you know, something, just be you, be real, give, introduce people. Like if you, if you, when you come into the group, um, and I know somebody that would be great for your podcast, I'd be like, Deb, you need to meet Jane and Jane, you need to meet Deb and, you know, and just, and connect people. Cause that's what we would do in person, right? We would talk to each other and we would help each other. And we would, we wouldn't be weird about what we say. <laughs> For some reason, we get into an online space and we think we need to be somebody else and we don't. We just need to be ourselves. <sighs> That's tough sometimes, right? It's tough to be ourselves sometimes when there's all of these pressures, especially in the entrepreneurial world, especially mm -hmm. in the last like five to 10 years. There's just been a like, I feel like a major shift of what the what it should look like. <laughs> and um, people, you know, myself included, didn't really think through until later I understood, but like the things that we're seeing, like you just mentioned earlier, it's not the, where they started. And if you looked back at anybody's first website or first Facebook post or first anything, it's going to not be the most perfect thing in the world. It's probably something that they're like, oh, I can't believe that's still online. Right. Yeah. But go back. And, I mean, my first live trainings, Oh, please, please do not go back and look at those. They were terrible. I was horrible. I was so boring because I was trying to be perfect. No. Yeah. yeah. And that's a good note too of just, um, you could, you could spend six months perfecting a program or you could spend six weeks and decide, let's try it and see how it goes. And then I'll, I'll iterate, which is what I recommend because, the more time you spend on it, the more it's just going to drag you down because you're going to be like, why can't I just get this out there? And I'm going to be like, you can. But <laughs> right. And you should. It might not be perfect, but that's going to be OK. Yep. Yep. Um, so, well, anyway, thank you again so much for being here. I really appreciate it. I appreciate it, Deb. Thanks for the opportunity. And if you're uh, following us, I hope that you liked this episode. If you could subscribe, if you're not already subscribed, that would be awesome so that you don't miss our upcoming episodes, as well as if you liked this episode and you know somebody that also would like it, I hope that you could share that too. Uh, until the next time, take care and find a little bit of calm and I'll see you again later. Bye. Bye.